It's it's live on YouTube. Hey Joe, can you hear me? I don't know if Joe can hear us or not. Diane, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I want to make sure it was working. Yeah, loud and clear. Thank hey, you. John, just one um, question. Um, I see Sharon's iPad too, and I recognize her as Sharon Peterson. Was she invited to uh, attend through the Zoom? Is that the, I that. Uh, Sharon, are you representing the Chain of Lake Association? Is that what the deal is? Yes, that is. Okay, yep. Yeah, so uh, she was invited by uh, Supervisor Bosquez. So. Okay, thank you, because we've been had, had a lot of comments or requests to have the Zoom access for public comment, and, and that's contrary to our resolution. So thank you for clarifying that for me. Yep. <coughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing I can do about it now, anyway. Yep. Uh, okay, it's nine o'clock, and uh, I'm going to call this meeting to order. This meeting and all other meetings of this committee are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the media in accordance with Wisconsin statute so that the citizenry may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. Uh, roll call has been taken, all members are present. Looking for a motion to approve the minutes. From our January 15th. So, Jack, Kevin. Uh, we have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 That passes um, unanimously. And now we need to review and approve uh, the agenda. The minutes. The minutes. I'm sorry. Excuse me. The, the minutes. No, I think we just <laughs> Oh, did we? Yeah, no, sorry no. about that. Uh, we need to review and approve the agenda for today. Oh. Okay. We have a first and a second. So, Jack, and then who did the second? Mary? Mary. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Should we ask what is on the agenda for today? Uh, it was posted on the door. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's uh, passed unanimously. And now we come to the public comment portion of uh, the meeting. Is there anyone here that has anything other than uh, the chain parking issues they'd like to speak on? I will add mine to uh, the parking. I 
we have another comment, but I'll add it to the program. Is, is it related? Uh, um, yes, it can be related. Okay. It deals with item. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> it deals with item 10, approval of the 2021-25 uh, plan, but it can be related to the project also. Um, okay, we'll we'll roll it into the well, it'll be fine to roll it into. <clears throat> okay, so then with that, we'll we'll just move into uh, item number six, and we'll start with the uh, public comment portion of that. Um, <clears throat> I would like to thank, welcome the uh, chain association to start up the discussion, and then I think we'll just hang on. He's still in there. We're going to keep, um, if you come up to speak, you have three minutes uh, to give your, your speech. We want to keep it moving kind of, kind of uh, as smoothly as you can. So we'll give everyone three minutes that, that wishes to speak. Um, we invited the, the representative from the association, so she'll have her chance to, uh, I, I believe it's read a letter. That's, yes, it is. Yeah. So, um, so we'll let her read that letter, and then we'll move on to uh, the people here in the room. <clears throat> and then I, I would like to start out first by letting everybody kind of know why we're here today. Um, the, the main issue is access uh, to the lake. And, and when the parking on the roads in the township was changed, that affected the access for the general public. So that's what started this all off. And um, <clears throat> it's our responsibility as county board supervisors to make sure that all the residents of Wapaka County and visitors to our county have access to all the public property. But with that comes a lot of other issues that I get tied into it. So this meeting, uh, when I brought it up to John, <clears throat> was basically so we could spitball some ideas on you know, how can we accomplish that or are we already accomplishing that? So we're st we still have a lot of work to do even after this meeting on researching uh, different ideas. So with that, John, do you have a list of people who want to speak for? No, I think we're gonna start with the one and then uh, we just let people <coughs> maybe okay. work around the room however you wanna do it. Okay, um, when you do want to speak, uh, we'll have you come up here and sit by the mic and then uh, give your name and address and then uh, you'll have your three minutes. But with that, we'll, we'll start off. Ma'am, and you can read your letter. Okay, uh, my name is Sharon Peterson and I'm president of the Bapaka Chain of Lakes Association. And just a little bit about our association, we're a 501c3. And our mission is uh, dedicated to preserving these unique spring-fed lakes and their surrounding environment for present and future generations of residents and visitors. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the more than 640 households that are members of the Wapaka Chain of Lakes Association, the Board of Directors would like to express its strong opposition to any proposed use of Oakwood Park for additional carbo trailer parking to access the Chain of Lakes. First, the association disagrees that the Parks and Rec Department needs to provide any more parking for boats and trailers to access the chain. Based on the acreage, the chain also already has three times the maximum number of car trailer parking spaces for boat access set by the DNR. According to the DNR Regulation 1.91, the chain should have a maximum of 33 car trailer parking spaces. But instead of a maximum of 33, the chain already has over 100 public car trailer spaces accessing the chain boat ramps. And that does not even take into account the three private marinas that also provide private boat launch and boat rentals. The DNR regulations provide that exceeding maximum access standards will materially impair navigation and is detrimental to the public interest. So the chain already has three times the maximum in the words of the DNR and it will materially impair in navigation and is detrimental to the public interest to add even more parking. While many people may wish to access the chain, 
like national parks and state parks across the country, limits are maintained in order to protect and preserve natural resources. And the experience that people wish to have in these fragile environments on summer weekends and holidays, the demand may continue to exceed the parking available. And that may continue to be the case, but where does it end? Do you just continue to provide more and more parking? The DNR sets these standards for a reason. We urge this committee to take the responsible step and not go down a road that will even further exceed the established maximums for parking. As more and more areas around the state take steps to protect their lakes, it is irresponsible to risk jeopardizing the safety of chain boaters and the fragile environment of these lakes by continuing to add parking capacity when the capacity already far exceeds what the DNR states to be in the public's interest. Second, with respect to any plan involving Oakwood Park, the narrow residential streets that surround this area are not in any way suited to handle the resulting increased traffic of vehicles pulling boat trailers which would pose a significant danger to pedestrians as well as other cars and be detrimental to the residential nature and character of this neighborhood. Third, the association feels strongly that neither the Columbia Lake nor the minor lake boat ramps that this additional parking would serve are good choices to handle the increased traffic. Each ramp requires the driver to back up across either Cleggorn Road or West Minor Drive to access the ramp, stopping traffic in both directions as they do so. Each ramp can only accommodate one car trailer at a time, begging the question, where do the other vehicles with trailers line up to wait for their turn? Along those same roads causing further traffic jams? And once launched, where are the boats supposed to wait while the drivers go down the road to park the trailer? In addition to these concerns, boats launching at the minor lake ramp who want to access the main chain lakes must proceed through the Dake Lake Channel, which is already very congested on weekends and holidays. And the Columbia boat launch requires a driver to back down a 214 foot steep hill to access the ramp. And once they've done that, they launch into an already crowded and shallow bay which makes this ramp unworkable for many of the larger boats that have been coming on the chain in recent years. This plan is being proposed because Oakwood Park is where the county owns land, but these ramps are not a substitute for the Taylor Lake boat ramp, which is miles away. The logistics of this proposal just do not make sense. Finally, the environmental and aesthetic impact from the loss of this wooded green space park with its current walking trails and adjacent wetlands in our highly developed lake area would be tragic. Once this woods is cut down, the damage will have been done and it'll be too late to recognize the logistical flaws with this option. The Parks and Recreation Department and this committee should stand firmly against such a plan rather than be a proponent. This land was donated to the county decades ago to be preserved for a park not a parking lot. The Wapaka Chain Lakes Association urges this committee to act in the public interest to protect the safety of boaters on the chain, to prevent, for, prevent further damage to the chain environment by cutting down the woods, and to preserve the residential quality of this neighborhood and stop any plan to use Oakwood Park for car trailer parking before it goes any further. Thank you for your time and your consideration of the Board of Directors Wapaka Chena Lakes Association. Thank you. Thank you. And um, at this time, we're gonna mute your mic um, so that everybody else can speak. And one thing I forgot to mention is that we can't, as committee members, interact uh, with what you're saying. Uh, we can't ask questions or or anything like that. So we're just going to sit and listen to what you guys have to say, and uh, we'll try and get through it as smoothly as we can. Pete John Miller wanted to talk to you. Um, I ask for permission from the from the board to speak on the issue after the open for the public comment. After the public comment. Um, well, towards the end of the public comment, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. We can do. 
Okay. You yeah. want to be last? <laughs> <laughs> if he, excuse me, Supervisor Bosco, if he's not on the agenda, then he can't speak on the topic. He can only speak into the uh, on the public comment yeah. part. If, if you want to speak at the end of the public comment, that's fine. If, as long as it's on this topic. Okay. We originally asked for permission to speak on the topic, not in the public comment. Um, well, this is it. This is not in public. Comment. We're on this topic, so that's right. that's where but you can't interact. Correct. <clears throat> okay. I'll speak last. <laughs> um, who would like to go first? Okay, right up here. You <laughs> right up here, Mr. Ellis. My name is Bob Ellis, I'm a county board member since 2008. I live on the chain. <clears throat> a few comments first. I'm going to be reading these so I don't get crazy. Contacted the DNR at length. The DNR says any wetland filling would require authorization from the DNR and a review of the alternatives. It said, I'm not going to read all the rest of that. The DNR would agree to, would, would need to inspect the wooded areas. A large number of boat spaces beyond those that the DNR requires are already on the chain and are a valid consideration by the DNR. My comments I spent every summer of my life, 77 of those, on the chain. Spent one in Vietnam for a change. Uh, the number one focus of Parks and Rec should be safety, not parking. Uh, the chain is already overcrowded and has well beyond the recommended parking spaces that was already discussed. Water quality is greatly diminished and the shorelines are being disturbed with increased boat traffic. It's very difficult for lakes to recover once the water quality is compromised. I think we all know that. People simply need to accept the fact that they must come early if they need a parking space. Um, the chain cannot accommodate the increased demand Number eight on my list is if it, each committee member has, did not get there last summer, I invite you to come this summer. I'll take you out personally. I'll take you out for as many hours as you want to see. The collective chaos that we have last year was maybe the busiest ever in my 77 years of being here. And maybe it was busier by a factor of three. Chaos is enough. We should be over that. Uh, last thing, do not destroy the biggest, one of the biggest assets in Wapaka County. The end. Three minutes. Three minutes exactly. Who <laughs> knew? Hi. I'm David Foss. I live on the chain as well, have for many years. I have uh, property on the Crossing Lake and I have a property on Columbia Lake. I guess I would start by asking this, the, the people involved here, why are we building parking lots in residential neighborhoods? I thought that was not supposed to happen. Didn't we fight a battle last year with the wheelhouse about not building parking lots in residential neighborhoods? The roads can't accommodate it. There's a tremendous amount of foot traffic walking back and forth to the wheelhouse and scoopers, and people are speeding down the road all the time. We also have people parking essentially on our streets and blocking them because the roads aren't designed. I know she went into it, I'll reiterate it. There's not enough room for what's going on here. We can't take the additional traffic. The spots do exceed the DNR numbers. We all know that. We're talking about maybe 10 days a year where this comes into play. It's the weekends in July and the holidays. Most of the time there are open spots already at the launches. 
I'd be curious where the numbers are so that we can look at what the utilization of, of those parking facilities are already. There are open spots most of the weekdays. On the weekends, other lights approach this, like I'll give you Okachi down by the Milwaukee area. They limit the boat traffic going on for safety. We need to take that into consideration. That's how you're supposed to operate to keep things safely. I live there. I get to see the accidents. I watch people towing and I watch the, oh, I hate these bands. I watch the towables hit other boats because there's so many boats out there. I've actually watched it happen. And now you want to start increasing the numbers? It's crazy. If you were forward thinking, the cornfields were for sale last summer. Why didn't you buy the cornfields? Then you don't have to cut down the woods. You could have put a parking lot in those cornfields and you already had a boat launch that was made for kayaks that easily could have been converted. Where's the forward thinking? Now you're gonna put it on roads that can't accommodate it and you're gonna put it in front of residential houses? Good Lord. Okay, if we need to add so much more boating, why don't we put it on the other chain? There are There is a chain of five other lakes. We can expand parking over there. Maybe we dredge out so that we can go ripping around over there and destroy that environment. The DNR also states that there has to be a tree buffer when you design these parking lots. I don't know that there's gonna be room unless you wanna cut down the entire woods and turn what I've seen on the map over there. You'll probably have to turn it the other direction to have the tree buffer that the DNR calls for. Has anybody even looked at the tree buffer that the DNR states is necessary? A lot of the other points that I've written down have been covered, but it will directly affect the property taxes of the homes where you're gonna stick the parking lot in the residential neighborhood. Steve Batten, I live on Claiborne Road, N23, N2483, um, across from where this is proposed. Uh, my main concerns are I wanted to um, dig out a little bit in front of my cottage towards the lake. And I was told by zoning, I cannot cut any trees, even though they are more than the 35 foot setback limit that they require from the DNR. And if you want to cut all the trees across the road from the lake, it doesn't make any sense to me that one side you can't cut trees, the next side you can clear a lot. Um, the foot traffic is horrible there. Um, people are getting almost run over. My sister got almost hit by a car and the guy yelled, I live here, get out of the road. That's not going to help when there's uh, more boat traffic there and more cars and trailers parked there and driving on that road. Um, the accidents out on the lakes, three times last year, I was pulling a skier. I was by my skier. They were within 75 feet of my boat and someone became, came between me and the skier. Three times I lost ski ropes because they drove over my ski rope and cut it. Now you want to add more parking to have more boats out. I don't think that's a good idea. Skiing hours are limited, and that's when all the boat traffic is out there is 11 o'clock and after. <clears throat> Those are the main concerns I have. I hope that you do take into consideration. You don't live there, the rest of us do, and we understand that there's a lot of problems with safety there, and I hope safety is your main concern. Thank you. I'm Dan Johnson. I uh, it's my wife, and we live on uh, N23 Claiborne Road. My family has been in this area for over five generations. What I've seen here is one of the worst things I've seen happen. I'm ashamed of what's happening. First of all, I have two things that I want to make comment on. First is item 10, which is the uh, approve the resolution 44 to adopt the 2021-25 plan. I'd like to provide, first of all, a compliment to the committee that wrote this. They've done a fairly good job of understanding uh, what is being done and what the demographics are and where things are going. What is missing 
is a baseline for where the county currently is, what services are already provided, what type of launching facilities are already provided, and how does that compare to where the rest of the state is. I think it's been brought up a number of times that we already provide more than enough launch facilities and parking facilities for the lakes. That's what's needed in the plan. So I'd recommend you do not approve it until that is added into the plan. You can't really have a plan until you understand where you are with the current situation. The second one is item six. I'm gonna mention a few things that have already been mentioned because they're really well worth mentioning again. The chain of lakes already far exceeds the, the DNR's recommendations that have been brought up many, many times. And that impacts the environment in general. It impacts the safety of the lakes. It impacts everybody around the lakes and it impacts the environment. Our law enforcement struggles to maintain law and order and safety on the lakes and the roadways. Increasing the parking is only going to make it worse. The overall area, if you take that park and um, the, the Oakwood Park right now is really a buffer for the lakes. As I think most people know, there's a number of uh, small marshy areas in that area that provides a buffer for the lakes and helps to support the environment of the lakes. We destroy that, they're going to also be destroying the lakes themselves. The Park Commission wrote the 2021, 2024, the year 2025 vision. And in there, there are two items that need to be emphasized. And this is what you're supposed to be looking at. I'm gonna just read those two items. The first two items, which are your priority, provides sufficient park and recreation facilities to meet the demand of the Wapaka County residents and guests without adversely affecting existing natural resources. The second one is preserved for the prosperity, the characteristics and diversity of the natural resources of Wapaka County. It doesn't say anything about parking. What it says is preserve and protect. We already know enough parking is provided for the chain of lakes. It may be there are other lakes that require better parking, but not the chain. So creating additional parking completely goes against what your two top priorities are. One of the things we have to ask the committee, even proposing this, what are your goals? Is your goal to have uh, a party cold type of environment for the chain of lakes? Or is it really to have a family friendly area that people can enjoy nature and they feel safe and secure and don't let them be run away by boats or whatever. So my wife and I strongly oppose additional parking to the chain lanes. More specifically oppose the destruction of it. If anything, you should be reducing the amount of parking. My name is Tom Weiss. I retired up here 10 years ago. I live on Big Lake, four houses, well, the fourth house from the boat ramp. Um, our families, my wife and myself, have come up to Alpaca for over 70 years. So it was a foregone conclusion that we were going to retire up here. I, we have four grandchildren, ages 11 is the oldest now. And they live in California and Pennsylvania. And they have come in every year for two weeks because they love Wapaki. It's their Disney. Now, my concern, having grandchildren that age, there's a lot of people walking on clay farm. There's no walking paths. They have to walk on the road off to the side, of course. And I'll tell you, now, it's 25 miles per hour, and uh, there was recently, a, a, last year, somebody went into the water because somebody was going too fast. And I see it all the time, 
and I'm yelling at people that just go 40 miles an hour down there, and I'm not exactly. So, if you go through with this, okay, because you want to go higher than what the DNR, three times, or higher as far as capacity for trailer, uh, for people, you know, with their trailer. Why would we want to increase that? Uh, it's going to take away um, what makes us unique up here. Um, the other thing is nobody's mentioned so far. I, I've got a whole list too, but I think so far what, what I hear people uh, are right on. The other one is that if anybody is, and I'm sure you, you're aware from Day Lake to Columbia, there's only one way in, and that's that channel. And it can only allow one vessel to go through there, be it a canoe or a boat, at one at a time. And I've been waiting 20 minutes just to be able to pass, because we all know one gets behind the other one and they don't want somebody else to come through, all right? Um, it's just gonna get worse. So that's all I have and uh, thank you. Good morning, John and committee, and uh, thank you for this hearing and taking these comments. Uh, my name is uh, Robert Falks. Uh, our residence is M2285 Long Cold Drive in the town of Dayton. Uh, additionally, we are taxpayers and steward of uh, two acres that's left on Lime Kiln, that was next to the uh, kayak park, and uh, 40 acres on Q uh, on Occam and Dunn's Lake. John, as I said to you earlier before this meeting, I think that you and your department are to be highly commended for the cleanliness of, uh, especially with the, the kayak uh, watch park there at Q, which got totally overrun this year. It was overtaxed and uh, I've gone by there, you know, two or three times a day as we're uh, trying to maintain the property on Q that's going to be turned over conservation of the public uh, fairly soon. And uh, you and, uh, and your staff have seen out there working at the, just a tremendous job of keeping things clean under, uh, under all the traffic there last year. In regard to the uh, parking ideas and proposals and things like that, I think this is a, it's a terrible idea. Uh, so it's not to be redundant with what a lot of other people have said. The lakes, you know, they can't breathe anymore. They're not making any more water. There's some lost revenue by shutting down out and things like that that maybe, you know, raise the fees. But we were really, really lucky last year by the kayak park and the casino bridge, that somebody didn't get killed. And when ambulances can't get through, and then it's not gonna be the police department's fault, like who added this extra boat traffic? And yes, the lakes are, they're a public trust and doctrine, and they do, they, they belong to everybody. That, that's totally true. But just as it's been pointed out, there are other, uh, state, local, and national bodies of water where you limit the traffic. And I can understand why it's not a lot of fun maybe to be in your position as park and rec representatives to get yelled at by people that maybe don't even live here because they shut the parking off on uh, Otter Drive or, or things like that. It's probably not a fun position to be in. But as much as anything, it's really a safety issue. So in closing, I ask for uh, extreme consideration to forget about this idea. 
and even adding any more parking, whether it's, you know, we would have needed parking, we've been asked for it about the property that we have on the Kellen Lake and things like that. But it, it, in great conscience, we, we, we can't do that because the lakes, they can't handle the traffic that's already on there. They can't breathe. Thank you for your time this morning. Good morning. My name is John Huff Teaser. Um, I'm a resident uh, of N 1446 West Stratton Road in the town of Dayton. Um, also retired up here. Um, also can play the Have You Been Here Long Enough game as my triple great grandfather was in Dayton. Uh, those of us who live on Str Stratton Lake have great pride in the fact that we have never been, currently are not, and never will be, we hope associated with the chain, great. So who's this chain gang and what do they want? Um, I know that when people come, I like to show them the chain of lakes, the, the, the facilities we have, the, the tourist spots. And it seems that uh, there are some people whose only goal is to restrict this such that unless you live on the chain, you can't be on the chain. It surprises me that a lot of the fights we've had in the last couple of years while I've been here have been about kayaks and, and those terrible people and how they behave paddling their kayaks. Of course, there's motorboats and uh, parks and recreation. I object to the fact that the first thing people suggest that parks and rec should do is safety. Then let's all stay home. That's, that's what we're doing with these masks. Um, so I'm encouraging this group to find a nice solution. And I think you've come upon one to provide parking so people who live in the area and would like to take a small boat and enjoy the chain have a place to do so. Yeah, it's busy. Uh, I agree, our lake was busier this summer than any other summer in the past. We all have too many kids. We uh, all have more leisure time. Uh, but with COVID, what a better way to isolate than to be out in your own little boat on a nice lake. I think that uh, looking at the position, I can raise my voice, I can stomp my shoe on the table, uh, I can speak hyperbolically about how terrible the destruction, the whole chain is going to be destroyed if we put in one more parking lot. I think looking at the map, there's plenty of room, there's more than enough trees, the wetlands won't be gone, and people will enjoy the chain more to the detriment of those who happen to own property on it, but to benefit of all the others who want to use the, the lakes for their recreation and enjoyment. Thank you very much. <coughs> Anyone else? I'm Gary Graham. I live on 1752 Otter Channel Drive. It, it, it occurred to me that this is a solution looking for a problem. Uh, there is no problem. We, we've talked a lot about how much parking is already available. You mentioned the charter of, of this board is to ensure access. I, I think that's how you put it. We far exceed, we've heard numerous times, reasonable parking, what DNR considers parking far exceeded. Um, what problem are we trying to solve here? There's plenty of access, really in no case, will you be able to provide enough parking that anyone who wants to go to the chain at any time can. 
I would ask we, if we put in this parking lot, what then? When that parking lot is full, is that enough or, or what is the right number? Does anybody ask that question? Will this parking spot give everyone in Wapaka County, everyone in the state, access to the chain if they want it? Again, there is enough parking right now. We don't need more parking. There is a safety concern. There is a damage concern to the environment, both from constructing the parking lot and added more traffic on the chain. That should all be taken into account. Has anyone consulted law enforcement? What does law enforcement think? Do they want more boats on the chain? It's already nearly unmanageable. There is a, a serious safety issue on the chain, no question about it. Um, what about the expenditure? What, what is this parking lot gonna cost? 100,000, 200,000? Is that a wise use of the budget uh, of our county tax dollars, the budget of this board? I, I, I guess, again, there's enough parking. It, it far exceeds what the DNR, DNR wants. Um, you're never gonna be able to make enough parking that everyone at any time that wants to go to the chain can go to the chain. So what is the goal here? What, what are these are those 32 parking spots? Is that enough? At some point we have to ask what's enough and the DNR has already laid that out. Why do we want to exceed that? To the detriment of safety and to the detriment of the environment. Again, I, I just think this is a solution looking for a problem. There is no problem. If you wanna to go to the chain and you're concerned about parking, Get up a little earlier and come find a parking spot. I don't think you're going to ever be able to accommodate everyone who at any time wants to get in their car, hook up their boat, and come to the chain. That I, I just don't see that happening. If, again, if we have these parking spots, is that enough? Thank you. Is that so you go around it? I don't know, you trip over a cord or something. <clears throat> yeah. County board members. Yeah. We think we can walk anywhere we want. <laughs> <laughs> it's my cord. <laughs> Gerald Murphy, uh, N 2576 Norris Lane, and I serve as the county representative on the county board from District 14, which includes a good share of Farmington, but two thirds approximately of the chain of lakes. And I've listened to all of the people so far that have talked, minus one, that have seen a real problem with added parking. Well, it's sort of like seeing the obvious. Anybody that has any experience with the chain of lakes, and I, I'm not as old as Mr. Ellis back here by college, but I've been here for 50 years or more, one way or another, and I've seen what's happened to the chain of lakes. I don't like it. I don't want to exaggerate that particular problem by adding more parking, especially when our guidance from the DNR says we have enough parking. We have more than enough parking. I served with Mr. Ellis on the chain district. That is the board that is set up to administer safety and well-being for the chain of lakes. And we have the power to uh, levy small taxes to be able to, on your property tax, you've probably seen it, to be able to meet those goals. We have spent thousands and thousands of dollars fighting invasive species that come in. Where they come from, we don't know, but we suspect they, they didn't come from the chain of lakes. We're fighting those, but we're also monitoring the water. We've done numerous water studies, and what those water studies are showing us is that each time we do one, the chain of lakes has denigrated 
a little bit more. It may not be from year to year that you can see it with your eyes or smell it or what, but it shows with the scientific test. We have a gem there. We've been privileged to have a gem there. But unfortunately, our gem is starting to be uh, starting to get rough. And uh, I hope that in the future, we don't kill the golden goose by making the chain of lakes, by its pollution, its lack of safety, its uh, the roads around the chain of lakes not being able to handle the traffic. I hope we don't cause people to throw up their hands and say, we don't want to come to the chain of lakes. We don't want to live on the chain of lakes because that has an adverse effect as someone mentioned here on property taxes. If the value of the property around the chain of lakes goes down, the tax base goes down also, which uh, is a concern, especially uh, at the county level. And that, so I would say the board that you're uh, seeing up here, the parks board, has done a wonderful job over the years of me watching them from afar, being a member of the county board. Um, mentioned numerous places that they have done uh, good things for. Park, uh, Victory Park, uh, Keller Park, the trails that are going across the, the uh, county for people to bike or walk on, wonderful. Unfortunately, this is not a good idea, this extra parking. And I think uh, we almost have unanimous agreement in this room that it isn't good idea. So I know I talked to Chairman Bosquez yesterday and he has pointed out that this is advisory. They wanna hear from us and we are letting them know. I hope that they step back and say, maybe we should scrap this park idea or this parking lot idea on this wilderness land. Thank you. Hi, my name is Todd Schwarm. Uh, we have a property on Snug Harbor Lane, E1113 Snug Harbor Lane. And uh, I uh, have heard a lot of the comments that have uh, been said. I can just say ditto to shorten that portion of it. Uh, but I think there's things that need to be pointed out. Uh, the word safety has been mentioned multiple times in everybody's comments. And I cannot underemphasize what, what uh, is going on with the chain over the years. We, we are third generation uh, on that location. Uh, my uh, wife's family have been there since 1952. And seeing what has changed has made it such a challenge that at times on weekends, when most of the time is when uh, these uh, parking spots are being used, the uh, saturation of boats on the chain have uh, become uh, what I would say a, a big safety issue. We have two patrol boats at sometimes not even two patrol boats that are responsible for 596 acres of water. And uh, talking with them, they, they even say, we can't get to all of the issues that are coming up. Please help us. Uh, our location has a, uh, a position where we put a raft out to give ourselves a safety zone. And it isn't enough. People cut between our raft and our dock. I have a grandchild, I have children, and and there's times where we, well, we can't be out now because this is, this is high traffic time. Uh, I have uh, experienced witnessing going down to the end of Long Lake, right at the mouth of the Crystal River. And you can see, you can count anywhere between 25 and 60 boats there parked all day. As nature calls, when you have food and eat, uh, you need to use the bathroom. And people do that right there. Uh, <coughs> I had comments from people that live on the Crystal River saying that they've seen human feces floating down the river 
And where does that come from? And what is that doing to the quality? Uh, but the most, most concern that I have is the word safety. My wife and I, three years ago, were on the Crossing Lake, enjoying a nice little kayak ride when a uh, pontoon boat ran us over. My wife was struck and her boat capsized. I was hit broadside. I went under the boat and I was about 10 feet from a running motor. I still, right now, I'm getting uh, chills from the fact that if I was not a good swimmer, I would be dead right now. And it's because of the people that are coming that are unfamiliar with the rules and regulations. This person was going faster than slow no weight. Somebody here lives on the crossing. They know the, the, uh, the situations and, and adding more traffic on Cleghorn Road, which is already a safety hazard. The launch on Columbia should be just for kayaks and, and such. Backing a boat trailer down a blind hill is, is needs more people just to guide somebody. They don't know if the boat trailer is going right or left or, or going straight. So you have somebody standing there and then cars coming, like many have mentioned, the speeds, walking, riding a bike or anything, that road's already oversaturated and putting a, a uh, sponge, as I call it, a parking lot that's gonna absorb more vehicles to make this. And then just think about the traffic when somebody's launching their boat. Uh, they take their boat, they park, park the boat there, then they have to walk, drive, drive their park, their boat trailer back to where the, the parking spot is supposed to be, and then come back. That's gonna be about a 20 minute duration now, what if somebody's trying to get their boat out? What if another person's trying to get in? This is absolutely a congestion nightmare. Please, please, please do not consider this for the safety and for the congestion. We are triple the saturated number from the DNR's recommendation. I appreciate you hearing me and please take that consideration and do not go through with this. Thank you. Hi, I'm Charlie Sparr. Uh, we live on E-1136 Indian Hill Trail. And um, I have probably a little more perspective on some of these things that everybody has talked about. Our deck overlooks the casino ch channel coming through, also um, the boat landing in uh, the harbor. One thing we notice is when the boats are getting ready to leave, they're lined up, they're all over, they're next to the shorelines, they're whatever. It takes forever to get in and out of that boat land. Secondly, the casino channel, even though they widened it, the pontoon boats and everything are getting so big now, it's almost impossible to keep boats through there. So when they try, they're either bouncing off a boat by the casino or on the shorelines up on the front, or they're lined up, who knows how far, bumping into each other, I've seen accidents in the channel. Um, it's fun to sit and watch on a Saturday afternoon. I wouldn't be out there, but I mean, it's it's hilarious sometimes. And it's just too much traffic and the boats don't have anywhere to go once they're on the lakes. They, you know, they park in different lakes, drop anchor and stay there. But to the same point, where do they go to the bathroom? There's no bathrooms on the chain. You know, there's no places for them to pull up. The boat landing on Taylor Lake, you can pull up, there's bathrooms there. You can't pull up, park there. The only way you could get on that would be um, people's private docks or whatever. So um, I just think that uh, weekdays aren't bad, weekends are terrible. So you know, I don't think you need any more boats on that particular time frame. During the week, you can use more boats, that's fine. I mean, I don't think there's an issue. So, thank you. Well, <clears throat> I'm Judy Seuss. 
and 629 East Road, one of the very few in the room that does not live on the Channel 8. But I've had the honor of being the town clerk for the town of Dayton for over 28 years. I'm glad that you opened up this firestorm because that's what it is. Because as a clerk, every summer for 28 years, we in Dayton, as in Farmington, have dealt with issues on the channel like complaints, complaints, complaints. I asked our board earlier this winter or late fall to please start addressing this issue, to get a commission together, to get the sheriff's department, the DNR, the businesses <coughs> that are affected, the residents that live on the lakes, the residents that don't live on the lakes, and try to work out a solution. It's not gonna be perfect. Not everyone is gonna be happy, but at least from my perspective, when someone calls and complains, I can say, well, there was a commission. They worked on it. They looked at this. They're going to try this. They're going to do that. But the band-aid for 28 years has been to put up no parking signs. And that's all that's ever been done. Yes, there are issues on the chain of lights. Everyone knows that. And there are ways to fix them. But you need to work at it. So I commend you for doing it. Anyone else? <clears throat> uh, my name is Dennis Rochlow. I live uh, in 2271 Butternut Road. And I've been uh, coming here for, I don't know, since 1952. And I've lived here for a much shorter period than that as a resident. First of all, I want to commend the other speakers, all of them, even with which I disagree. Uh, they've been eloquent and they've been, been measured. On the other hand, I, I don't want to be measured. I think this is one of the most vaultingly stupid ideas I've ever encountered. And I would be willing to accommodate a friend from Hope College if he needs a place to park. And Judy Sue's has spoken properly this requires a more global approach than this band-aid, which is the wrong one, in my opinion. So when you have an opportunity, and the start was made last year over at the town of Farmington, we began discussing this area. This is a complex issue. And it doesn't have a simple solution. It's got a long-term period of study, open dialogue. I have my own personal view as to what you should do, but it requires, I think, a kind of comprehensive examination, not this kind of knee-jerk, reflexive, and in my view, idiotic response. Thank you. My name is John Miller. I'm the town chairman of Dayton. Um, I also live on the chain and I'm a board member of the chain association. I'm here speaking on behalf of myself, uh, also as um, town chair, not the board. Um, also, I've owned property here in the chain for almost 40 years, been coming longer than that. Um, we've had great comments, I think there's been uh, talked about in general about the problems with with parking with traffic on the chain. It's all true, and part of it's just due to the nature of how uh, valuable this area is to tourism. How wonderful it is! People keep coming back, family after family. Um, the chain is is a community. It's also neighborhoods put together to make this community. And what the solution that was proposed to put a parking lot in Oakwood is, it, it, it's not a solution. I guess it was a, a band-aid was a word used. But the solution for the lack, or as a, a putting a parking lot um, in Oakwood, um, 
because we lost parking or lost parking on Otter Drive doesn't make any any solution. It's making the problem worse. And my notes, I think, when I put my my uh, plan together, plan my outline, <coughs> it noted that's the parking that you're replacing are cars that were parked illegally. So now you want to have a parking spot to provide parking for those who continue to park illegally. Now they can park somewhere else. You now the, the problem that we have is, is parking because people want to use the chain, but there are limits to what we can do. Now this parking lot is, is, not, is not a solution at all. It's, it's a parking lot in the middle of, on a park, in a park, in the middle of a small neighborhood area They've talked about the, all the other issues. I wholeheartedly agree. It's a major problem. But one of the solutions to the problem that has caused this is the lack, and, and you know, a number of us have been to meetings with the sheriff and talked about it, is that the police, the sheriff's department, because Dayton and Farmington don't have police, the sheriff's department has more important things to do to write a parking ticket for somebody who's parked on a shoulder or right of way. In the case of Otter, that's not even a town road. If you look on the map, it's not a town road. The road is, is under an easement agreement. So these people are parking on somebody's property basically when they think they're parking on shoulder. Nobody is writing them tickets because they don't have time to do it. I've asked the sheriff numerous times to come out and, and write tickets on minor drive because people are parking there and never get a ticket, so they come back. The sheriff's comment to me was, you want to solve the parking problem, tow the cars away. And you know what? Everybody say, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that. Well. You asked the sheriff, and I think a number of us have been at those meetings with the sheriff. I know that some people here have been also. That's what he's, he's told us. Tell them away. They'll learn they can't park illegally. So the solution with Oakwood in a parking lot there is not a solution. It just causes a greater problem or the, the safety in the, the neighborhood around there. It's a green area. It was given to the county to be used for public purpose. I think it was even before that, it was to have been green space because the lady who sold it to it wasn't sold with the county. The county got it for a buck. So it was to be used because they reckon, the owner recognized that, that there should be a buffer. There should be area where people come to the North Woods to, to live and enjoy, like I did, to get out of the city and come to, the, to this beautiful North Woods area with a beautiful lake. So many of the families also have generations that have been there. Um, but it, it's, it, the problem is, is that it is being overutilized. If this was a single lake, the DNR looks at it as one entity. If they really came here to look at it, they would see all the little different lakes that make up this 700 acres. Believe me, I'd love to have the DNR come in here and do a, a study. What it would say is you're, you've got way too much parking right now and it should be limited. So the downside of this is instead of having a hundred parking spaces, uh, we could be cut way back because we're over over accessed right now. So that's that's what I got to say. I thank you for your time. Good morning, Jim Peglow, E1285 Radley Road. I am also a Town of Dayton uh, supervisor, past Town of Dayton chairman, 
And I've been a resident of the area in Wapaka County for 23, 24 years. I've raised my family here. We have enjoyed the Chain of Lakes, never lived on the Chain of Lakes, but have enjoyed the Chain of Lakes. I would like to uh, commend this um, Park and Rec Board for looking at these issues. They are issues. Is this the right answer? I don't know. Uh, but we have to come up with fair use answers. Um, the Chain of Lakes Association had a meeting July 14th of 20, and page two of the minutes, Caroline Murphy mentioned that the DNR's opinion of the Chain of Lakes are not being overused and, a limit, and limiting the voters is not necessary. Everything is free to be used by the, or free to use the lakes. And that's coming from the DNR. So I mean, this whole talk that the DNR is saying this, the DNR is saying that, I would empower you guys to go out to the DNR, get it right from them. And with doing that, work with what is best for the county, for all of the county. And that's what you guys are on the board for, is what is best for the entire county, not one specific area. And I won't go over like many of the previous people going four and four and a half, five minutes. Thank you for your time. Anyone else? Okay, um, since uh, no one else uh, wishes to speak, we are going to close the public comment portion of the meeting and get back to the regular meeting. Um, so just, just a heads up to everybody that uh, as we're speaking and talking amongst the committee members, um, interjecting while we speaking won't be tolerated. Okay, that's, you guys can sit and listen, that's great. Um, and, and I encourage that, but uh, uh, we won't have an interaction or an argument back and forth on, on any point. <clears throat> so with that, um, Kevin, you brought some cool maps for us. You wanna? <laughs> Well, actually, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, I'll expose yeah. the can't get kids <clears throat> right COVID and can't receive it at this point still. Um, so I'm going to take my mask off because I, I just let it bounce. Um, a couple of quick comments here, and I, I'm actually not going to comment on the wonderful, how can I say, exchange that came here or these people, all you came here on a, a day, took time, took effort. We had emails, many emails. Um, and I received a phone call yesterday from a wonderful lady who lived on the chain for years. Uh, great conversation with her. First off, I want to make it very, very clear. And unfortunately, for some reason or other, it was not expressed well, is that this is not a proposal. Um, this was something that our director of parks brought up, the idea of perhaps uh, putting something between Clayhorn and Minor as a, a possibility. It was just something that was brought up. I myself have looked at Oakwood and thought there may be some possibility of doing something, but not sure what. Now, the comment I'm going to make is that everything said here, very, very important, and actually points out the elephant in the room. The elephant is that the chain is overdeveloped, overused, and something needs to be done. Having said that, I have to compliment our chairman and our director of parks, John, uh, that they were willing to put these that issue through the idea of what do we do with the parking? What do we do with the landings? Put that issue on agendas so that we can have a discussion. I spent many hours 
And for those of you who know me previously from Farmington, um, dealing with that particular area around the wheelhouse, the casino, it has serious problems, serious issues. I agree 110% with the fact that that has been ignored for decades, that the overuse of the chain has been ignored for decades. Parking, I heard several times we have apparently 100 designated car trailer parking for the chain, public uh, parking available for them. That is way more than what the chain could handle. And the fact that we have 100 of them, and I don't know where all 100 are, that once again, it's way exceeding the public designated parking spaces for a chain that I seem to recall anywhere between 600 and 800 acres, I've been told, been hearing, I should say. It's way over the, the number of, of possible people coming here. The intent of bringing these subjects up on an agenda was to begin a discussion. The fact is that we're talking, say, approximately 32 public parking spots designated for the ramp. We're only talking 32. This idea that we want to increase the number of, of parking spaces will only add to, and I think my fellow committee members somewhat agree with this, we'd only be adding fuel to the fire. We're not talking about adding another 30 on top of the 100. Perhaps what we will discuss here is lowering it down to the point where it's more manageable. And I appreciate the, the input that what here has, but I understand the intent of the committee here is not to explode and add to the confusion, the chaos, the overdevelopment of the chain. The idea is to step forward and do something that as the Dayton clerk has mentioned, has been ignored for decades. We need to step forward and actually make some proactive interventions that will increase the safety of the chain, reduce the number of people who are there where you can walk almost from boat to boat to boat in some areas without touching the water. The, the fact is that my intent was to look at this by intent through a few more discussions you'll have over the period of months. My intent is to, as what was brought up again by the clerk, that said, and another gentleman here, saying that we need to involve all parties combined with this, the townships, the association, the district, concerned citizens, we need to actually address the issue rather than band-aiding it, which is not the intent or the thought here. The thought is to facilitate. And being that we're the larger entity as a county, being a facilitator, bringing in all party concerns, even a DNR perhaps, although that can complicate matters quite a bit. Our, my intent at least is to facilitate all the groups to come together and actually to address this issue in a timely, civil matter so we can accommodate as many people and retain this beautiful chain of lakes. I've only been here since 87. I've been at a pontoon boat for a number of years in the early 90s. It was getting too crowded then. There's too many people. The water quality is a big issue. As you point out, I think it's a tremendous issue. We need to ensure that beautiful chain that you have, that some of your people have for generations enjoy. We need to step up and actually do something. And I'm a, I don't want to sound upset, but I'm new to the area, really. I'm a stranger to the area. For decades, the residents, uh, whether it's a, the township or whether it's the county looking at it, we kind of ignored what was happening to the chain. 
we were ruining the chain, loving it to death. And I, I commend our chairman, Pete, here, and John, for actually being willing to uh, bring this issue up and to accept the criticisms, the concerns that are being brought up to this board committee meeting. Committee. And I have to say what, what uh, the intent that I would like to see for is that we act as a facilitator in order to bring all these groups together to really look at what is going on and how can we not only contain but also improve the quality of the use of that chain. And if you have a hundred parking spaces and we really should only have 30 some to accommodate the public, that's something we need to look at and work at. You're already loving it to death because it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, resource you have here. And I'm afraid that if we do not intervene, do not reduce some things, do not consolidate some ideas here, that their, your grandchildren are not going to enjoy the change. It is going to be a disaster. And we need to do something about it. So once again, the intent that I understood of our committee is to begin discussion on this. We are going to move forward, I imagine, under, under our, our chairman to open more discussion and try to get a handle, which may take a long, long period of time. Get a handle, however, at the beginning to address the issue of the chain of life and how to keep this beautiful, beautiful chain you have um, existing forever. Oh, that's all I have to say. Uh, Joel, you have anything on Zoom? No, com no comment, Pete. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, I'd just like to make a comment on the group here. Uh, recently, we had a meeting similar about the county clerks, and we opened it up to the public, and I was not only impressed, but pleased to see a bunch of people come. And once again, uh, we have an issue here that's just up for discussion, but we let the public go right away so we get a feel of what they want, what they feel about the discussion that we're going to have. And I, I just guess I want to say thanks a lot for coming. It does make a big difference. It's too often we sit at a meeting, and I've been in, you know, I've told you know, Mayor, why we go, we make some pretty big decisions sometimes. And all our meetings are open to the public, and most of the time, nobody ever shows up. And we make a decision, and a day later, somebody's criticizing us for it. And that's exactly the reason why I like to see this here. I just want to thank all you people for coming. We really appreciate your input. Thanks a lot. And, and uh, I'd, I'd like to say thank you to everyone. Uh, well done <laughs> um, for a meeting that could have uh, gotten very heated, um, which was a, a concern of mine. Um, most of you might not know that I'm a retired uh, Wapak County deputy, and uh, I started my career in law enforcement on the water patrol. Um, so I have a pretty good understanding of what's going on out there and, uh, and how things have been increasing. And my goal as a chairman is, and, and as all, all the other county board members know, we have to look out for all the citizens of Wapaka County. So if we were to go forward with say a parking idea, parking lot idea, I need all the information I can get and I'll do all the research I possibly can so I can stand up in front of a group like this and say, this is why I'm doing uh, this. This is what the, the research showed, and this is what our intentions are. Or if we don't do anything, I have to be able to stand up in front of the people that own a 16-foot John boat in Larrabee that want to go on the chain 
or the people from New London or Caledonia that want to use the chain, but the access has been limited somehow. I have to be able to stand up in front of them and say, we're not moving forward with anything because this is what the research shows. This is what we're trying to accomplish. <clears throat> and when John and I set this meeting up, <clears throat> it was just basically uh, my, <laughs> my idea was let's spitball some ideas. What, what else is out there? We have the parking lot idea. We have uh, Kevin working on some of that stuff to, to put together to see if it's even feasible. Um, and we do take into consideration what's it going to cost? Can we even can we even afford something like that? And how does it affect safety? And how does it affect the, the water quality and the environment? We also have to look at how does it affect the businesses that that depend on the chain as well, as well as the residents around the chain. So it's it's very complex, and it has been a problem that's been kicked down the road for a very long time. And as people get to know me on the county board and, and from committees like this, I don't like kicking the can down the road. Let's come up with a solution that works best for everyone um, for the long term. So 10 years from now or 15 years from now, someone else doesn't have to take it up again. Give some guidance to future generations on, on what can be done. So basically that's what this meeting was for. Um, unfortunately, it interrupted Kevin's <laughs> vacation. <laughs> um, but that's our goal. So right now, in this phase, we're, we're looking for ideas to, uh, to research. Um, I know this idea of the parking lot at, at the park, a um, lot of negative responses, but I really haven't heard any um, alternative ideas. And, and that's what we're going to be looking for. Um, How can we provide alternative ideas? Can we send it to you? Yep, email it okay. to me, and but I'll do the, the research. That, that's what it's yeah. <clears throat> so that's that's the goal, and we will eventually have to bring in more stakeholders, the towns, uh, businesses. Um, not a big fan of the DNR. I like catching fish too much, but <laughs> um, but we'll bring them in too. So I know some people are really upset with the idea, but right now that's all it is is an idea. And I would also like to mention. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, quite a while ago, uh, we set up some training <laughs> at Oakwood Park. So tomorrow there's going to be some uh, chainsaw training for our new employees <laughs> out there. We're not starting anything. We're just taking care of some more. Please don't, please don't assault our workers. There's going to be some highway guys out there and some parks guys doing chainsaw training. That's it. Looks like dead fall and stuff like that. That's going to be cleaned up. I think. Nobody's preparing them for anything. So I thought I'd better mention that too. <laughs> um, with that, uh, do we have any other discussion on the the boat landing parking issues uh, from committee now? Well, Pete, uh, one thing that we didn't really mention uh, okay. entirely as far as what the public comment was. Um, we did mention we got a bunch of emails, but I, I had gone through and <clears throat> just before the meeting, I looked and I had 145 emails uh, and, and pretty much the same things uh, that the uh, Lake Association had put out uh, as far as what people were commenting on. And then there was one for, hey, you should build a parking lot. So, <laughs> so uh, just wanted to get that out there. That there was a lot of email. I, I assume some of you are sent the emails as well. So. I got a bunch of them and I tried answering all of them. Hopefully I didn't miss anyone, but uh, um, the problem we're working on. I, just, I don't know if you're taking any questions or something, but someone was raising a hand. I don't think we can take questions. I don't think we can, but uh, uh, is, yeah. I am still, <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think we're allowed to take questions right now. So yeah. Um, if you email me though, if you have questions uh, or ideas or Right now, I'll look at anything <laughs> and I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Um, 
because we do have to look at the, the, the total scope of all residents of Wapaka County. And uh, right now, like I said, we're just looking for ideas. And, and the idea that wins out, maybe we don't do anything. That, that could be a possibility too. So that, that's on the, on the table as well. So uh, with that, I think we will move to <coughs> item number seven. Well, County Fairground. Yeah. Again, thanks everybody for coming. Don't feel bad about walking out if you want to. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, for the committee of people, I, I gave you the handouts. Um, and then, uh, so like the second page of that handout is the uh, Wapaka County Fairgrounds 2020 building rental rates. And uh, what we were looking to do is get this uh, approved through the committee as far as uh, we wanted to change the way we rent the, the buildings out there a little bit. And that impacts the fees. That's why we have to run it through you guys. Um, so with our grandstand pavilion building, we include the tables in there. And that's worked out really well. So um, without having to uh, shuffle tables around quite so much like we used to, um, we want to have a certain amount of tables and chairs included with each building that we rent out there. So um, what we did was added a little to the fee structure because before people had to say, yeah, I want 25 tables and 50 chairs. And then we charged them whatever it was per table and chair. And, and uh, that, that was how that uh, uh, worked out. So what we want to do is kind of clean this up because most people expect that they're going to get some tables and chairs when they get the building. So if someone else wants more or different ones than what's uh, included with the building, then we work that out and they pay an additional fee on top of that. So um, what I need is a motion from you guys and uh, to approve those rates uh, or any questions you might have about those. So uh, we have a motion to approve. Oh. All right, so that was from Kevin. Mary. All in favor of the uh, fee schedule, say aye. 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 All right, should we uh, say something and try and go over the hallway for you to talk or something? <laughs> I don't know. Can you guys hear what's going on? I, I, I can hear Joel here, but I'm just. Can you hear what's going on, Joel? Yes, I can. Yes. All right. All right. So let him know. Yeah. The next on the discussion on possible track changes, and I had that in your handout too. We just had a, Ann had put together some notes. So Ann, do you want to come up to the front table here and uh, or the end of the table, wherever you want to go? Um, and just kind of, we'll talk a little bit about what, what we're, we're talking about there. Um, now, one of the big issues from the department as far as uh, the track and uh, whatnot needs for change is we have a different kind of use out there. There's been those rodeos out there and whatnot. They work right in front of the grandstands and that whole area right in front of the grandstands is that clay. Well, we had well, a rodeo last year that was out there and uh, they have the dance out in the, in the pavilion building well, they track across that track and then haul that clay into the building. And it was, I mean, our guys were out there for days and days cleaning and it's still, yeah, I mean, you're scrubbing the floors, trying to get that clay out of there. It's near impossible. And we're spending a lot of money doing it. So one of the things we were talking about, we'd like to um, change that, you know, and, and then looking at the whole picture on how the track area is used and what people have requested in the past. We've had the, the fair asking for a few things. Um, the uh, polling group, the tractor pull group out there, they have requested in the past to build a polling track out past the, uh, the upright stanchions of the, of the overhang on the track uh, because it's too narrow between the wall and those upright I-beams for their polling track. Uh, so eventually they need to move their polling track further out. And this all would work together if we, um, I guess I'll, I'll back up a little bit. And then the fair had requested that the, uh, 
um, the banking on the one end of the track be taken down to <coughs> improve parking. And that would help us too, um, because we have this oddball, two oddball areas along the side of the track on the west side and the north side that, uh, you know, you have to weed whack the whole thing and it, it's kind of a pain and a weird area. So you can knock down the banking in the, on the west end of the track and that would give you a flat area. They could use it for parking. We gain, uh, it's easier to maintain. You can just zip around with a mower. Um, so there's benefits to it. The only negative to that is, you know, we've been keeping this track in roughly the shape that it was as far as the, the overall layout of it so that you could do the harness racing, which is the only thing that could use that particular shape and banking and everything. Well, harness racing doesn't seem to be coming back. Bear's not interested in doing it. Um, the, uh, even when they have uh, scheduled the events, weather usually knocks it out because if they get any rain, they can't run on it. Um, so it's, it's, it's not been uh, used for years and uh, it's probably not coming back. Um, so if we were able to harvest some of that area out there on the west end of the track, bring it out there, the pulling group could uh, build their track out of the excess stuff. We pull that clay out from in front of the grandstands, move it on top of their pulling track. Um, all this costs money, we don't have any plans specific yet, but what we're trying to do is, I think every, what everyone's been asking for kind of works together, you know? So do you want to talk a little bit or, Ann? Um, um, just to reiterate that, We're in a position now because of the new bank that's really in the building for groups to actually find the grandstand desirable to use more rent. And that, that space historically has been underutilized. So, by making these changes, we'll make our new building more desirable, the old grandstand more desirable. Um, provide for other events more desirable. And then, you know, it's going to be more desirable. John, I cannot hear Anne. Sorry. Do you want to come up here by the microphone in there? Thank you. <laughs> I can. <laughs> so, do you want me to sum okay, right. So I'll just summarize the main main thing that I see as an opportunity to um, to allow our event holders to have uh, um, a better opportunity for us to hold more events um, because of our new grand pavilion space, we're seeing an increased interest in using the grandstands in conjunction with that space, um, but we're running into a problem because of that surfacing on the track where um, it's becoming unreasonable to ask our event holders to make their, our space presentable in return in good condition after their event. So we've got this opportunity where we have multiple um, multiple groups that want these changes and they just seem to fit that we'd all benefit from it in some way. And for us, it's less maintenance, less wear and tear on our building, um, the opportunity to offer better space for more diverse events. Um, Yeah, so I think it's it's something uh, we'll, what we're looking for, I guess, is, uh, you know, can we move forward and kind of look at doing this, you know, like uh, uh, talk to the polling group, see if they're still interested in doing something with the middle, talk to the fair, see what their uh, requirements would be, uh, go, go forward with it. I know it, it was brought up in the past about moving the west end of the track, some of the banking, and at that time, it was decided that we didn't really want to lose the uh, possibility of, you know, having the horse racing out there, you know. Um, but it just seems to be kind of a something of the past that doesn't appear to be coming back anytime soon. You know, we also talked about other kind of racing that could happen out there, whether 
I think that Dairyland Classic group came out and talked about motorcycle racing out there at the track. Uh, we had a, but the, they would have to reconfigure the whole track and all the safety fencing and all that stuff uh, was beyond what they were interested in doing. Um, we had that off-road event out there a number of years ago, and that kind of that kind of got uh, poorly managed um, by the event uh, and turned into something ugly. And so it's just something that we could do with the current uses that are out there, and uh, it would improve all those uses uh, by doing this kind of work. So we just want the, I guess the go ahead or at least the, um, you know, the, the don't, don't do that at all, you know, and tell us if you're not interested in looking at it at all, then let me know. But uh, I just want to know if you guys are sort of on board with this before we, you know, obviously we'd bring it to the committee again before we did any major work out there, but just want to talk to the interested parties, see if that polling group is still interested in moving some dirt around. How much would it cost the county, if, you know, to do this? What materials would need to go where? And, you know, so there's a lot of footwork that needs to be done before anything could happen. Yep. Can we get Rich up here? I know the friend <clears throat> has a lot of concerns about what's going on. I think uh, Ann and I talked. So we're good. You got your okay? Yep, we're <laughs> Thanks. I just thought I'd bring it up. Yep. Good work, Ann. Pete, can I make a comment? Sure can. Pete, uh, this came up a number of times way back when Roger was here. And um, the old parks committee did not want to pull the horse racing part out of it because they thought it may come back. And that's, you know, quite a while ago. I know Gene Sorensen was very involved in that too. Um, I think with a, a newer parks group, which we have on a younger group, I'm older in the group now, that, you know, it may be a good time to do a little study research on it. Ed Smith, north of Wapaka, retired farmer, he did a lot of um, uh, that type of racing with a buggy and cart, and he was going around, and I know he's not into it anymore, but I don't know, John, if you've talked to anybody about who is involved in that, of where it's all going, or if it's over for good, and, and it, it may never come back to Wywega, and I don't know how Jack feels about it, but I mean, it's something... You know, you could poke in a little bit. If you gave Ed Smith a call, he might be able to tell you what's going on or if it's over with. I know he doesn't buggy race anymore, but I don't know of anybody else in the county that did it either. So do we know how many events they used to have per year? It was mostly just during fair. It was one event. And a lot of times, like I say, if it, if it rained at all, it was or for stones. You have to have that track perfectly clean. Yep. Stones, because that one year, we had, we thought we had it good. We had the colony up there with the grader and everything. And then they went around and there's too many stolen ones and then they, they call it off. So, yeah. like, mm -hmm. I mean, for what, what that track grandstand area uses, we'd have to dedicate it just for horses and that's it. Yeah, because every time you use it on a deal. Yeah, every time you had the tractor pulls in between the horse races or something, those tractors dig deeper, you know, bring up rocks and everything. So it's just, yeah, it's, you need a dedicated track for that, you know, basically to, for the horse people. Cause I mean, they got a lot of money and time and you know, they're right. animals, you know, they don't want to hurt their animals. So um, trying to do too many things with one spot. Uh, well, I guess the way I look at it is that we can accommodate people we know that are going to use it and that are using it uh, instead of holding it up for the hope that Somebody else may use it down the road. I think it's it's time we just uh, move on to the events we know that are going to happen out there. Uh, it, like Ann said, it just blends in that it'll benefit a lot of different uh, people and activities. If we do that. So I'm okay with uh, looking into it. Let's see what it costs to do. Okay. Well, we'll do some footwork and, and see what we can come up with. So. How are you, Mary? That's fine. Yeah. Yep, that's good. All right. So that's all I had on that. Um, now, the county forest, I don't know if we want to kick this down the road a little ways. Uh, <laughs> the meeting's yeah. getting kind of long already, but uh, uh, I don't have anything real specific. We, because we, 
at the last meeting, I decided that it wasn't going to be an ATV park. So um, we were, I was told to look into what else we're going to do out there and changing the scope of the capital money. Uh, but I'm not a hundred percent sure which direction we're trying to go yet. So I didn't, I didn't ask for changing anything mm -hmm. on the capital money yet. So um, I know we wanted to do a few things about, uh, you know, signing trails, things like that, but I think we need to have a little longer discussion on that to decide which direction we want to go with the county forest. Now, uh, does anybody want to kick in something now, or should we talk uh, about it at the next meeting? Or I think for uh, time consideration, let's mm -hmm. let's table this one until uh, next month to see which way we want to sure we want to head on that. So. All right. We had a couple things to talk about. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. The next on the agenda is the Wapaka County Outdoor Recreation Plan. Um, so I, you guys have in that packet of the resolution, I've got a copy here if you want to pass it around. Um, do you any further discussion uh, on that? That'll be the, the good one. The good, good one is here. <laughs> But uh, basically, uh, you know, it was brought up during the during the meeting about uh, the levels of what's out there now. There, there is kind of in there, uh, probably not specifically what the gentleman was looking for. Um, basically, what we have there is uh, the plan is okay. It basically lists we list all of our facilities that the county has, not as a it's not a, like a countywide what all the municipalities have for parks and whatnot. Some places do that, uh, but they also have planning departments that do their plans. Um, uh, this was done in house. And so basically we have a list of all of our parks and what is there, what might possibly be done there. And then things we've added in the past, uh, the last plan were, um, the projections out there from the, from the state about what uh, what activities are popular, uh, what what do we provide for, what don't we provide for? Um, it, it, it's a very basic plan. It meets the requirements of the state. Uh, it could be better, uh, but I guess I would I would like to get this moved forward so we can uh, get it approved by the county board and then the state, so we don't. Uh, uh, get ourselves in a situation where we don't qualify for grants because we don't have a plan in place. Yeah. And, and it also helps the, uh, the town and, and the municipalities uh, apply for grants. If uh, the county has a plan, their township has a plan, and the municip municipality has a plan, um, they get little, like, little extra check marks uh, so that they, they get approved for the grant money. And if we fall behind, because now is the time of year that people are out there looking for the money, if we if we drop the ball, uh, it'll have a cascading effect. Uh, other people might not be able to get. Because our last plan expired at the end of last year, technically, you know, so because um, that was through 2020. So this one's supposed to be 2021 through 2025. So. That's why we're trying to get this going through. We pushed it out a couple months there due to various things. Um, but yeah, so any other concerns about the plan at this point? Can I ask one question? I'll make it short. <laughs> <laughs> if not, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, say no. yeah we can. <laughs> I, I realize that the plan is just kind of a, a guide. I don't want to say a suggestion type of thing. It isn't written in stone. Uh, certainly in any times here as far as changes, circumstances changes, we do make changes within the plan. And I think as John pointed out and, and uh, Chairman has pointed out that it's a requirement by the state in order to allow grants uh, for all of us to be able to uh, uh, move forward on uh, areas of uh, recreation and parks. And I, I would actually make a motion that we accept the, the plan as given to us um, so that we can move this along to the county board. We have a motion, is there a second? 
All in favor of uh, approving the, the recreation plan, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. That's unanimous, so that passes. And this is the one we need to sign, John? Yeah, we just need one to uh, have everybody sign. And the next step, I believe, is next week, the uh, legislative judicial committee, and then, then it goes to county board. So you'll see it again. Yep. So. On to Camp Victory update. Okay, uh, number <clears throat> 11 there. Just an update on that. Uh, the DNR needed us, or we needed to send a, a plan to the DNR uh, of what we plan on doing for camping out at Victory if we were to open it for camping again. So I updated a map. Um, I, I, we had a rough plan from the past. I kind of shined that up a little bit to uh, change it to where we were having a 15 to 20 sites, you know, in that first loop, if that's what we wanted to do. They just wanted a rough plan on, to make sure that we're considering all the, all the things you gotta consider with a campground. So I went through, wrote the plan based on all the statutory requirements. They ask you, you know, are you addressing this, this, and this on the permit application for a campground? Um, we were a campground in the past. Uh, we, had, we actually had a permitted campground and whatnot. So, um, basically we went through and updated, or I went through and updated all the, uh, all the information from our previous permit so that they can see what we're intending to do. Uh, they have stated in the past that, uh, if we send them our plan, they would approve it as an approved use under that grant. That would check off one of the boxes that we had to do prior to moving forward with opening it as a campground again. Then we get into working with Diane and um, figuring out what other legal aspects we would have to do to move forward. So I just want to let you know that that has been sent out uh, waiting for the state's approval. So any questions on that? Thank you. Sounds great. All right. Uh, let's see, the number 12 there, the Spring Creek Bridge on the Tomorrow River Trail. Um, we did, uh, I applied for the grant through the snowmobile program uh, that was approved um, to basically take it, take it down to the, uh, it's an old railroad bridge uh, with, that's been redecked. Uh, the last time it was done uh, was in 92. And uh, so we're basically taking it down to the ties and the cross ties and taking those off because they're starting to rot. Um, and then putting new cross ties on and a new deck on top of that. So um, we have the grant money to do it. Uh, when I went into the process, uh, because it is an existing bridge, it's been decked once already. Uh, we shouldn't have needed a permit. However, no one got a permit the last time, apparently. <laughs> so um, I need to get a permit through the DNR. Uh, and because there are piles in the water, uh, it's an individual permit. So. It's a little more lengthy application process and uh, it shouldn't cost us anything because it's on a state trail. So it's actually DNR property. I'm applying for a bridge, for their bridge for, through them. So it's kind of a weird setup. But um, anyway, uh, that I'm real close to uh, completing the, all the background information I need for the individual permit, but then it'll have to be a class one notification in the papers and everything. So. Uh, there will be a little process here, and then I will put together the final specs for the bridge and bid it up. So just want to let you guys know that's in, in process. And that is the uh, uh, easternmost bridge before Manawa, not the one that goes over the Little Wolf uh, into Manawa, but the, the bridge before that. So, uh, if you're wondering where that bridge is. So... That's coming. Uh, any questions on that? All right. Uh, park ordinance changes. This is just another update too. Uh, Diane sent me some examples um, of ordinances from other counties and whatnot. I kind of went through and marked up what I liked and didn't like. And, and she was, uh, just last Friday, she called and said that she was working on it. And uh, she wants to get a template to me uh, Basically, this is the way we, we should make it look, you know, and then do we need to add or subtract anything from here? So 
once we get something from her and we get our little kick at it, then we'll bring it to you guys to see what she thinks. So that's a process. Um, but Diane's in no big rush to get that changed because they're working on some other AT ordinances and stuff. So we want to kind of work in conjunction with those. And I'll just keep babbling yeah. on here. Um, number 14, Sturgeon Trail Lease Agreement. Uh, I got an uh, email from the person um, in charge of the, the, the lease for the DNR. That DNR owns that property as well. We just have a lease. It was a 20 year lease and it is up at the end of this year for the Sturgeon Trail. So um, they want to renew it. Uh, they just changed a couple of you know, boilerplate stuff in their agreement. Um, we, Ann and I talked about it a little bit, but we're gonna dig in a little deeper to make sure there isn't something else that should be spelled out in the agreement that gets recorded onto the deed uh, as well, whatever the agreement is. So um, I don't foresee doing any big changes to that. Um, I gotta give props to whoever did the original agreement. Uh, they excluded a few things specifically. You know, one was the parking lot on the, I guess it, what's that, the south side of X um, that the DNR owns, they specifically excluded that from our responsibility, which is really good because that's a really popular dumping grounds for refrigerators and deer carcasses and all kinds of stuff. So DNR can come pick that stuff up, you know, um, we get enough stuff. Um, so we're just going through that, making sure everything's going to be good and we'll bring that back to you guys too before uh, we have that signed it just has to be done in the next couple months here so that's all i have on that and um for me the the chairman chairman report uh the only thing really to report is i'm digging into uh the water patrol numbers um for the last five years uh on the chain just to get us some more information out there so that's all i have you're up now again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've talked enough. Um, I guess uh, just to speak to the department activities, the next one. Um, we just wanted to mention that we opened the rec trail, the winter rec trail. Is that still open, Ann? Yep. Okay. It should be open for a while. Yeah, we finally got enough snow and we we're able to groom it and everything. Over, It's over on the country club's property there. And uh, so we're pretty happy to get that opened up. and. <laughs> Hopefully we get this snow coming around here and it'll make it real nice. So uh, local, um, there's a local ski club that uses that twice a week and they were there already last night. Um, they actually had to limit their numbers this year to, to 30 actual members. So kids of varying ages from you know, high school age, but they were out there last night already super appreciative of the open. So good. Uh, we're working on a capital projects. Uh, the uh, we got a truck that we should be getting here any day, and then we've got a, another one to order. We're going to order a little sooner than we did last year. They usually tell us to hold off for a while, but it takes so long to get them. We might as well order them right away here. Um, so we're getting that done. Uh, fairgrounds events. Uh, we've been working with Jed, uh, the health officer, on what can be allowed and what can't be. We did tell one. Uh, uh, wedding that was scheduled for April that they would just have to look for another venue. Uh, Jed was not comfortable with having a wedding out there uh, just from the amount of people that come <coughs> and, and do, you know, as far as social distancing and all that fun stuff. So, uh, but he did approve um, the plan to have, there's a gun show coming up on March, I think. Uh, and then there's a couple other events too where, um, he said that would be okay to give it a shot. So what he's requiring of the groups is they have to submit a plan saying, this is how we intend to, you know, address COVID issues. You know, we're having hand sanitizing stations here and there. We have masks uh, that people can have when they come in. And so you have to basically show that you're trying and uh, go from there. So, John? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I guess just get get it clear to me. The city quite often gets requests for things at fairgrounds, and right now Jeremy thinks it's absolutely zero. So he tells everybody there's absolutely nothing going on up there. Well, that's that's shifting now with the with the vaccination starting and everything. 
Jed's feeling a little better about some of this stuff. So the answer is have them call us and we can discuss it one on one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Because uh, we're trying to <clears throat> creep back open, you know, but still be responsible, you know. So it's okay. it's I a understand. balancing act. So, uh, but otherwise, you anything you know, we're missing big stuff um, as far as department activities. No, thank you for mentioning your stock training. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ann came in my office. She's like, "Well, this is going to have sound really bad timing here, but <laughs> we scheduled the saw training out at Oakwood." I did have the. It was a little evil side to me there. Going, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there'd be a bunch of highway trucks and the Ann's people there. It was like, oh no, that's bad. So uh, anyway, that, that does help when they have the saw training out there, we get some kind of hazard trees knocked over and whatever, and people get a chance to cut on some weird, you know, more dangerous trees with, with proper supervision. So it is good for our folks and highway folks. And that's about all I have. Okay, our next regular meeting, March 2nd. Um, you know if it's gonna be here or in the other room? Probably the little room, uh, maybe, depending on uh, right. what you think as far as public participation might be. We're supposed to be in the little room, but I okay. scheduled this room for today. Nice. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, make a motion to adjourn. Uh, okay. Yeah, non debatable. We are adjourned. <laughs> All right. Bye, Joe. Bye everyone, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.